Oakland International Raceway. Race leader Boris Said has pitted, but the Granger Ford of Greg Biffle has yet to stop here in our second caution. He didn't stop the first time. He hasn't stopped this time. And we're working lap number 24. Well, good potential strategy to get those five bonus points for leading the lap for Greg Biffle. So those points are very important. Let's go to the leader's pitch, Dave Burns. Borisette brings the 44 in Federated Auto Parts Ford. They're going to go to the right side. Interesting. They changed left sides on Ron Fellow's truck the first time through. These are the tires that take the least abuse. They're going to put the left sides on, fill it with fuel, and send Boris back out of here. Let's go down to also the right sides on the one of Dennis Setzer. They're going to do the same strategy and try to get some of that fender pulled out from the earlier incidents. Now Dennis is down. He will go out behind Scott Hansen. Well, guys, I think what Boris said is trying to do here, he's trying to get his right side tires changed now so that later in the race, he can go to left side tires and have fresh left side tires later in the race when that's more important. Ron Fellows, we saw in that first stop, took left side tires. Boy, the strategy here is really getting fascinating. Greg Biffle stays out. He is on tires that are now 24 laps old. And everybody else pretty much behind him has got at least two fresh tires. Let's set it for you. The way it stacks up right now, it is Greg Biffle, your race leader. And the way they cross the line, of course, it uh, shows Boris said, but that electronic scoring is going to switch around. The reason we're under this second yellow is Mylon Garrett, the number 85, stalled right at the entrance to the festival turns and there you see he's on the hook finally getting pulled behind the wall and over to the right there look at that the 16 and the 24 Hornaday and Sprague behind the wall both of them working on their trucks trying to get back into this race on board right now with Greg Biffle qualified seventh of course he won the race earlier this year in Memphis and Greg Biffle his best road course finish as we're back to green flag racing 20th and right now he's in the lead, but look who is right on his back bumper. It is Ron Fellow. And by the way, in the background, did you see Mike Bliss flying off the road there, coming out of the S's, lost a position there to Randy Tolzma. And here comes Fellows looking to get underneath. Now remember, he's got fresher tires on his left side. He changed those back at lap 16. He takes the lead again. So another lead change here on the road course. And oh no, Rob Morgan in the festival turn. Look out everybody, that's a vulnerable spot. Somehow, everybody makes it without tagging him on the driver's side door. He was primed for a T-bone. He's got damage to the right front. So Morgan, who was running in 12th position at the time, is gonna find himself losing a lot of ground. got another chance to take a look and see exactly what happened. Well, not surprising. First lap after the restart, first flying lap down into the festival curves, and it looks like Rob Morgan just gets tagged there by Boris Set. Actually, look at the flame from underneath Boris Set's car as Jay Sauter makes his way around. So does Mike Stefanik and a whole host of other trucks. Boris shown in uh, 15th position after his pit stop. And remember, he took on rights. And there, you can see the damage on Rob Morgan's brand new truck. They just put this together. First time out on the track, and it has been running very well so far. There's your race leaders, the 87. And here comes Barr said, so the contact must have had a problem. So the race strategy has backfired. He got into the pack and now is down in pit lane. And look at that 35 mile an hour pit lane speed limit. Very, very slow. Very frustrating for Boris Set. Dave Burns is in Boris's pit. And guys, I don't think there's any turn on this course that's 35 miles an hour uh, in eternity for Boris Set. And as you said, the strategy to put on left, uh, to put on left last time, um, actually, I'm looking now, they put on right, so they're gonna put on lefts now, and they're gonna have four fresh tires. So it's interesting, with that left front cut down, this is gonna give Boris the best tires on the course. They're waiting now to get that left front pulled out. And they're gonna do it. Do Boris is out of here. And you can hear Boris having trouble getting rolling there with that very long, tall first gear. Now let's go on board with Boris and see what happened. There's Jay Sauter. He goes by Jay Sauter, and Boris just 
just gets in too hot and gets into the side of Rob Morgan. No question about it. So now, Boris has the freshest tires on the racetrack, but he finds himself in 24th position. Can he reel in Ron Fellows? We're going to find out at the Granger 225. Round 11 of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, the Granger 225. You're looking at our race leader. That is Ron Fellows in the AER Manufacturing Chevrolet. He's got about a one-second lead now over Greg Biffle. But what is amazing right there in the Granger Ford is Biffle has not stopped. And we're working lap 33. Well, that's the key, Marty, because Biffle has not changed tires yet, and Ron Fellows has. There is Ron Horn today. He's back out on the racetrack with a pretty special-looking truck there. They pretty much had to rip all the front bodywork off that thing. But he is out there running, and he's going to try and pick up whatever points he can. He is running 28th right now, 11 laps off the pace, and that's what you look like after you get your nose smashed in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Now behind the 16, and, and we should tell you Hornaday's running about two to three seconds off the race pace. No surprise there. There is the race leader, and that's the 87 of Ron Fellows, and he has now opened up about a 1.5 second lead. And as we're waiting for Fellows to come on through and Biffle to come right behind him, remember the fuel window, everybody said no one could go more than 37 laps absolute tops we're working lap number 35 biffle's gonna have to stop sooner or later now there is randy tolsma what a comeback after last week his teammate right behind him and the napa field summary the points as of right now you would find stacy compton in the points lead based on what happened to jack sprague and to ron hornaday both of them spending a great deal amount of time behind the wall now these two teammates running lockstep. Of course, Tolzma coming back from a real tough crash last week. He's hurting quite a bit on the ribs, Dave. He is indeed, Marty, but the amazing thing is he doesn't feel bad enough so that he doesn't have to drive. In fact, after the accident, he did not re-injure his right shoulder nor his left hand, and Randy was even feeling good enough to go do a fishing show. And he cast with his right shoulder and arm, and he caught six fish. So Randy feels ready to race here at Portland. Well, he's doing a great job right now as he is running third. There is the fourth place truck, the RC Cola Dodge of Stacy Compton's teammate. There is the XI Ford of uh, Mike Bliss in fifth, and Terry Cook is running in sixth. And this is his best run of the season going right now. So Bliss looking for his first spot, top five of the year, and same with Cook. And whoa, we got a little tail heavy. Yeah, those guys, they make that transition from the concrete onto the asphalt there, and they're up the top, top of second gear, and that is a real tricky transition. They've been laying big strips of rubber there as they rejoin the main part of the racetrack all weekend. Cook's best finish so far this year has been 12th at Odessa at I-70 Speedway. So right now, the six, and look, he's carrying that left front, locking it up on the right side. Moving back one more position, we pick up the seventh place runner. That's Andy Houston in the Cat Rental Chevrolet. On board with Andy, who started 13th, now running seventh, and the rain has stopped again. A few laps ago, the rain had kicked back up. Uh, we go on with our Circuit City telemetry with Andy Houston. Watch him go through the gears. This is into the final corner here. You have to be very, very patient here. And it looks like Andy Houston is headed to pit lane. So Andy Houston ducks into the pits. And Stacy Compton has slowed on the front stretch. He has lost several positions. He has dropped back three holes. Oh, he's got a problem. Yeah, he's cut that left rear tire down. That left rear has gone down. And how disappointing for Stacy Compton. He is so far from the pit lane. Player in it. It, ha rear. it happens right all the way at the front straightaway, right after pit in. And what makes this so hard? And what makes this so hard is this racetrack is primarily right-hand corners. Left side tires. You can hear the crew talking about what they're going to do when they get him around, but it's going to take an awfully long time. He's going to lose at least one lap. What a heartbreak. They have been working so hard on their road course program. And then you saw Dennis Setzer go by him. Setzer was running 11, so Setzer now up into the top 10. And Stacy's got a handful just trying to work the RC Dodge back to pit lane. Mike Wallace has gone by. He is 12th. Oh, heartbreaking for Stacy Compton. 
while all this was going on, we can tell you that Andy Houston has made his pit stop. He is back out. He is currently shown in 21st position.